is Math 2, Section 3.9, Imaginary and Complex Numbers. These notes are different than normally what in your module packet. I wrote these notes, so you're going to need to insert them into your binder right in front of Section 3.9 that's in there. Today we're going to be talking about um, imaginary numbers and complex numbers, numbers that you have not seen before ever. Up until now, you've known about real numbers. So real numbers are every number that you know about so far. Last week we talked about, we drew that Venn diagram, that big box that had all those sets of numbers in it. And we talked about the rational numbers we talked about the integers, the whole numbers, and the irrational numbers. Remember, the rationals are the fractions. So a rational number is any number that can be written as a fraction. An integer is a positive or negative whole number. This should sound very familiar too. A whole number is zero and the positives. Positive whole numbers. In the irrationals, those are those weird ones. Those are the non-repeating, non-terminating decimals. Non-repeating, non-terminating decimals. And we also describe those as square roots of non-perfect squares. We can talk about now the imaginary numbers. There is an imaginary unit called I, I for imaginary, and by definition, I is the square root of negative one. So up until now, you have not been able to take the square root of a negative number. As of today, you will be able to take the square root of a negative number. So that's the single imaginary unit. An imaginary number is any multiple of i. For example, 3i. So some number times i. 4i. Negative 7i. 1 half i. Um, i times the square root of 3. Those are all imaginary numbers. It's some real number times i. All right, now for the uh, meat part of this, here we go. We are going to be able to take the square roots of negative numbers. So if we look here, and it's very similar to what we did before in terms of breaking those square roots down. This square root of negative 16, we can write is the square root of 16 times the square root of negative 1. The square root of 16 is 4. The square root of negative 1 is i. And that's it. Looking at this one, the square root of negative 81, if we split that apart, square root 81, square root negative 1, and that'll give us 9i. For this one, where we have this square root of 12, well, we know for sure this negative part's going to come out here as the square root of negative 1. And now we can break down that square root 12 just like we used to. Square root 4, square root 3, which gives us 2, square root 3, times an i. 
Now this becomes kind of confusing here because we're not sure whether the I is underneath the square root or not, especially if you have sloppy handwriting. So generally we write this with the I in front of the square root. So we would write this as 2i square root 3. And the last one, let's look at this one over here, looking at that 32, the 32 square root 16, square root 2, and then the negative, square root negative 1. This gives us 5 times 4, square root 2 times an i. Pulling this all together then, we'll have 20i square root 2. Okay, four, so if I'm going too fast, please pause the video, rewind it a bit, and hear it again. Pause it if, you, if I'm writing too fast so that you can have a chance to catch up. Powers of i, let's look at these. So we know i to the first is just i. i to the second, well that's square root negative one times the square root of negative one which is just negative one. I cubed is I squared times I, which is negative one times I, or negative I. I to the fourth will be I squared times I squared. Remember when we multiply things that have exponents, we add the exponents, so two plus two is four. That gives us a negative one times a negative one, which is one. All right, i to the fifth. And please write it over here next to this list. There's a pattern that I want you to see here in a minute, so I'm organizing this on purpose. i to the fifth is i to the fourth times i, but i to the fourth is one, so we have just i. i to the sixth is i to the fourth times i squared. Add the exponents there, two plus four is six. And i to the fourth is one times um, i squared is negative one. So we have one times negative one, which is negative one. i to the seventh is i to the fourth times i cubed. One times negative i, negative i. I'm sorry, I have a cold. And then the last one, i to the eighth, i to the fourth times i to the fourth, one times one, which is one. Look at this, i, negative one, negative i, and one. This pattern is going to repeat. It cycles through this list every four powers. And if you want to, to, to remember this order, sometimes what I say is, I won, I won. Like you win a race, I won, I won. And then the middle two are negative. I won, I won. And the middle two are negative. That can help you remember that order there. All right, let's see if we can go ahead and simplify some more problems here. Let's look at this one. The square root of negative five times the square root of negative 10. Okay, we've got that negative in here, so we can kind of start to pull that negative out in your mind and not have to write out this, the square root of negative one all the time. So this one, that negative is gonna come out as an i, square root five. Negative comes out here, again, as i, square root 10. And then we'll have i squared times the square root of 50. Oh, look at that, i squared, that's negative one times, and now square root 50, can you start to break this down in your head? That's 25 times two, so square root 25, five times square root two, and we end up with negative five square root two. Let's look at this next one. This is uh, square root of negative 15 times square root negative two. Again, we can think of this as square root 15 times square root negative one, which is square root 15 times i, or i square root 15. 
time here, this one's going to be i square root 2. And when we multiply those, we multiply the outside, so we have i squared square root 30. Square root 30 does not break down. There's no perfect square that divides into 30, so we'll leave it. But i squared here is negative 1, so we have negative square root 30. Look at this one here. Let's start to simplify this. This 12 is square root 4 square root 3, so that's 2 square root 3. If I'm going too fast, please write down what I'm saying. Square root 12 is square root 4 square root 3, so that's 2 square root 3, and then times the square root of negative 1, which would be an i, times here, this would be i square root 10. Multiplying, that gives us 2i squared square root 30. So again, we multiply the outsides, multiply the insides. i squared is negative 1, negative 2. Square root 30, again, does not break down. So we leave it right there. And how about this one right here? Let's see. Oh, that square root of negative 5. Now we did one just right over here. That was i square root 5 times, this one's going to be i square root 15. And we multiply, that's i squared. 15 times 75, oops, 15 times 15 is 75. Oh, and look at that, that 75 breaks down. That's going to be a 25 times a 3. So um, this i squared's negative, and then the square root of 25 would be 5, and square root 3. And there we go. Look at this guy down here, 8i squared. We have to square both pieces. That gives us 64i squared. i squared is negative 1, so we end up with negative 64. And here, i squared times i to the 7th. When we multiply, we add the exponents, so that gives us i to the 9th. Now, let's think about this. We know that i to a power cycles through every 4. So you figure out how many times does 4 go into 9. 4 goes into 9 twice with a remainder of 1, which means we're going to cycle through this pattern twice, and then remainder 1, we're going to end up back at the top. So this is just i. Let's look at another one. Let's do this one, i to the tenth to the third. Raising powers to a power, we multiply the exponents. That's i to the thirtieth. All right, now we need to figure out how many times are we going to cycle through this pattern. So we can do 30 divided by 4. And 30 divided by 4 is 7. That's 28. Remainder 2. This is the important part, the remainder part. The number of times cycling through doesn't matter. The remainder part is the important part. So a remainder 2 gets us 1, 2, right there. So this is negative 1. There's another one that's going to show up over here. So let's just hold on and look at this one over here. 3i squared times a negative 4i cubed squared. All right, we're going to have to do this outside exponent first and square this piece. So we'll have 3i squared times, and when we square that, a negative 4 squared, 16, i to the 6th, multiply here, 3 times 16, 48, i to the 8th, all right, we need to simplify this i to the 8th, so we think, all right, we're going to cycle through how many times? cycle through this group of 4, so we're going to do 8 divided by 4. I know you can see it, it's right up here, but I still want to talk to you in case a bigger number shows up. 8 divided by 4 is 2, no remainder, which means this went through this pattern exactly an even number of times. So it ended up at the bottom of a cycle, so this is 1, and 48 times 1 is 48. Okay. 
Please turn the page. That's imaginary, so we're going to go one step further and talk about some complex numbers. A complex number is any number written in the form a plus bi where a is the real part and B times I is the imaginary part. So if we look at this exa these examples right here, I want you to identify the real part and the imaginary part of each number. Well, the real part is just what you're used to seeing. It's right here, it's seven. That's real. Don't make this hard. And the three I, that's the imaginary part. Looking at this one, four is the real part. And this negative half I, the whole negative half I, that's the imaginary part. Okay, this one, we just have this imaginary part. But think about it, you could write this as zero plus six i, which would mean the real part is zero, and the imaginary part is the six i. And this negative 13, well, we can write that as a complex number, negative 13 plus zero i, it is real for the negative 13, and it's got a zero imaginary part. All right, a bit of simplifying with um, these complex numbers. We can add, subtract, multiply, and divide them just like we do with other numbers. The basic idea is that we treat i just like the variable x, and then simplify i squared equals negative one at the end, or any other power if we happen to have higher powers. So let's look at this one, 41i times two. We just multiply the real parts, so the, or the real number part, the 41 times two, which is 82i. Done, that's it. Look at this one, six i times a three i, That'll be 18i squared. All right, but what's i squared? i squared's negative one. So we have negative 18. Number 19, we're gonna combine some like terms here. Everything's being, with well, these two terms are being added, so we can just combine the uh, like terms. Negative two plus a seven is five, and a three i minus a three i well, that's zero i, so it's gone. So that sum is just five. This one's a tad bit trickier because we have to subtract. So I need you to remember to take that negative sign and we're gonna distribute it through these parentheses. So we'll have negative four plus 10 i, then minus a negative two becomes plus two, minus a minus three, plus three i, and then combining like terms like normal, we have negative two plus 13i. And that's the final answer right there. Look at this one. I think we did one similar to this on the other side, but we'll do another one again. Nine i squared, we square both pieces. That is 81 i squared. But again, what's i squared? That's negative one. So we end up with negative 81. Okay, this one, there's no addition or subtraction sign in here in the middle. So that's multiplication, which means we're gonna distribute through. So three times a one is three. Three times a four I, 
12i plus, and then the 2i times a 1, 2i, and 2i times 4i, 8i squared. Combining some like terms, we have 3 plus 14i, and then 8i squared. Well, i squared is negative 1, so that's really a minus 8. And that gives us a negative 5 plus 14i. How about this next one? 6 plus 5i times 6 minus 5i. Again, we're going to distribute through 6 times 6, 36. 6 times a minus 5i, minus 30i. 5i times a 6, 30i. And a 5i times a negative 5i is minus 25i squared. Combining some like terms. Oh, look at these middle terms. The negative 30i and the 30i subtract out. So we're left with 36 and then a minus 25i squared. i squared is negative 1, so this becomes plus 25. And 36 plus 25 is 61. Isn't that one cool? That when you start off multiplying two complex numbers, sometimes you can end up with something that's completely real. That's awesome. Look at this one, 5 minus 2i squared. It's a 5 minus 2i times a 5 minus 2i. Same thing, distribute through. 5 times 5 is 25. 5 times a minus 2i minus 10i. Minus 2i times a 5 is another minus 10i. And a plus 4i squared. And we'll have 25 minus 20i. And then the 4i squared is minus 4. So 21 minus 20i. Okay, take a deep breath. We're almost done. Just this last little bit down here. A little bit more with radicals. All right, we have simplified radicals without the i's. Look at all these guys down here don't have any i's in them. No negative square roots. And we've done that before. We've simplified them. We've multiplied them. We now need to look at adding them. And in order to add radicals, they must be like radicals, which means they must have the same number under the radical. Under the square root symbol. All right. If radicals are not like radicals, we try to simplify them and get them to be the same number underneath the radical. It's very similar to combining like terms. You are just combining like radicals. So I've done a couple of examples here where we're going to combine some like terms, something you should be very familiar with. 2x plus a 5x, 7x, sure. Look at this one, 2 square root 3 plus 5 square root 3, exactly the same. It's just instead of that x, we have this square root 3. So we'll get 7 square root 3. Likewise, here, 6a plus 5a is 11a. So very similar, 6 square root 2 plus 5 square root 2. Just like we have like variables, we have like radicals. We can combine these, and that's 11 square root 2. This one down here, be careful, 4y minus y. That's a 4y minus a 1y, which is 3y. Most of you wouldn't goof that one up. But this one, for some reason, kind of throws people for a loop. The square root of 11s do not cancel out. This is 4 square root of 11 minus 1 square root of 11, which is 3 square root of 11. All right, now these last two over here. We don't have like radicals anymore. Here we had two square root threes. Here we had two square root twos, two square root of 11. Not the same here. That's a 12. That's a 3. We're going to need to simplify that square root 12. Square root 12 is square root 4 square root 2, which is 2 square root 3. So here's this 2, and then the square root of 12, 2 square root 3 plus a 5 square root 3, 
Got to multiply these guys together first. Multiplication before addition. So that's 4 square root 3 plus 5 square root 3, which is 9 square root 3. Now we have like radicals, so we can combine them. Okay, last one over here. Let's look at this. You might have to write a little tiny here to squeeze this one in, but it'll fit. 12 square root 45. Okay, here's the 12. Square root 45 is square root 9 times square root 5. So that's 3 square root 5. Plus, let's look at this one. Um, oh, you know what? I'm going to finish that one up right away. That's 36 square root 5. All right, now let's handle this 3 square root 24. So 3 and then 24 is square root 4 times square root 6, which is 2 square root 6, or 6 square root 6. 8 square root 5 does not simplify. Okay, last one here. 5 times, all right, 54. 9 times 6, so square root 9 times square root 6 which is 3 square root 6. And we have a 15 square root 6. Now, which of these guys can we combine? This 36 square root 5 and that 8 square root 5, or minus 8 square root 5. 36 minus 8 is 28 square root 5. And then the square root 6 is, we have a 6 square root 6 and a negative 15 square root 6, that is minus 9 square root 6. Whew. Again, if I went too fast and you missed something, please rewind the video, look and see, listen to it again, it, take it slower, pause it in between to catch up with writing things down, listen to what I'm saying, it's all there. Your assignment is kind of glary, but here it is. Um, today, Tuesday, November 21st, section 3.9, day one. I would like you to do this 3.9 day one worksheet. And please do page 60, questions one through 21. Work on it this weekend if you can, but I won't collect it until Tuesday. So if you want to leave it until Monday night, whoo, that's going to be rough because you're looking at almost a week of not doing any math and you might forget all this stuff you might have to watch this video again or you can do it right off the bat and then be done with it but this is all due on tuesday i'll collect this three nine day one worksheet on tuesday and then all all of um module three nine will be due on tuesday although i've only given you part of it now have a very happy thanksgiving and i'll see you next week